this is Margaret from the blog Don't Call It Bollywood and this is my dog whose head will be popping up every once in a while and tonight I wanted to talk about money because <laughs> money is what makes the world go round and what makes films be made and sometimes it can be hard to connect the creative product that we see with the money that it costs to get it made. I'm particularly thinking about this right now because the news has just broken that Cry Arge, a new young production house, is actually suing one of its creative people, Abhishek Kapoor, the director. And this it relates to a whole history of how money works and what's been changing lately and what's happening and so on and so forth. Back in the olden days, before film was industrialized, the money came from, well, yourself. You'd sell your house or hawk your jewelry or borrow money from your family or sometimes from the mafia. <laughs> and you would manage to get a film made. Producers tended to work on only one film at a time and to work very, very closely with the director. Often they actually were the director. You'd be producer, screenwriter, director, everything in one. And budgets were kept very small because you did not want to lose your money, your very own money that you have invested in this film. Things started to change after Indian film gained industrial status very, very rapidly. The first approach was for multinational corporations to come into the market and just sort of throw money at people. <laughs> they didn't know what they were buying. They didn't know what was happening. They just put gobs of money in. And this is where you got Chandning Chuck to China, you got Savaria, you got a handful of other movies in this early years, which just had massive budgets with almost no supervision. And then they resulted in massive losses, because that's what happens when you have massive budgets with no supervision. So then there was a pullback on the part of the multinational corporations and a new system developed, the middleman system. So your multinational, Disney or whoever, gives money to a smaller production house. That smaller production house, which is in tune with the Indian market and the Indian industry, finds a talented young director writer who has a good product and funnels the money to them. This works very well. It's hard for a talented young Indian director writer working in the Indian market to gain access to international funding. They need a middleman and it's impossible for the international funders to figure out who they should be giving money to without that middleman. There's a variety of how this happens. You have something like Kubsarat, for instance, which Disney funded, but the um, Anil Kapoor production house clearly had very tight control over every part of the process. So the money was almost direct. It went from Disney to Anil Kapoor and then out of his hands seconds later into the director. There wasn't much of a gap there. You also have studios like Cryarch, which is one of the most successful of this new standard, who will go out, find the script, find the director, and then turn around, find the money, put the two of them together, and then wash their hands of the process. And this is fine. This is actually a useful, good thing to be happening. You need someone who fills that gap of understanding the creativity of the Indian filmmakers and understanding the business side of getting them money. So CryArch has been doing this very well. It's only been around for two years, but it's had a string of hits, all following this pattern. Padman was the most re uh, recent one. Obviously, that was Twinkle Khanna's film. Mrs. Funny Bones, her production house, was founded in order to make it. She's the one who found the story in the first place. She wrote a book about it. She came up with a script idea. Her husband starred in it. The whole thing. It's her movie. <laughs> but she didn't have the money. So that's where Cryarge came in. They put her together with the money people, got her the money, gave it to her production house. Her production house oversaw the whole film, hired a very experienced director, Alar Barlki, put her husband in as the star, brought in Sonam, brought in all of these other people, put together a very good product and came out with a success, with a profit. There's been a lot of movies that have worked like this, not just from Cryarge, but from all kinds of movie houses in recent years. The problem is it all relies on having faith in the director, not in his artistic vision, but in his business sense. There's still an overall expectation that the director is the parent of the film, has total control, total understanding, total care for the film. In the olden days, sometimes you would have a director like that, or sometimes you would have a director who worked hand in hand like this with their producer. That's similar to the relationship that Twinkle and Arbelki and Akshay had with Padman. You can tell everybody was involved in every decision as a group. 
But often you would have directors who just got money from the mob and then went off on their own and made their movie. And that's what these middlemen are sort of anticipating. Sometimes you have a producer who loves this idea and is working closely with the director and you give money to that collective. Sometimes you just give it to the director who does everything all at once because you're used to that. Directors do do everything all at once. And that's what Abhishek Kapoor did. He came up with the story for, oh, what's the film? Kadarnath. He had the story. He came up with the script. He found the cast. The hero is Sushant Singh Rajput, who Abhishek Kapoor was one of the first to cast in Kepoche. That was his big break. So I'm sure that is a personal relationship. He was able to bring in this star just because they had history in the past. He put together this entire package and enticed with this package Sarah Ali Khan, one of the biggest launches of the near future. <laughs> her parents were looking for a film that would be a good solid launch for her with an experienced director at the helm with a big enough name co-starring to get people to notice her without overwhelming her. And this seemed perfect. You have Abhishek Kapoor, who's got a history of hits and you've got Sushant Singh Rajput, who's on his way up. This is going to be a good movie. This whole package was put together and presented to Cryarge. And Cryarge said, yes, this looks good. And then they went out and found the funding, signed the contracts, and handed everything over to Abhishek Kapoor and his particular production house. I think it's Guy in the Sky. The idea being that Cryarge is now hands off. They want to respect his artistic decisions and his artistic ability and let him just do whatever he wants to do and make his own movie, which is fine, which is good even. It's nice to have this creative freedom. The problem is this is not creative freedom you should give to Abhishek Kapoor in particular. This is the man who sunk Disney UTV with Futur. This is the man who Farhan Akhtar would not trust with Rock On 2, even though he wrote the script, came up with the idea, and had directed Rock On 1. There's something about him. He is just not a reliable director. And in this case, he was not willing to let go. His schedules went way out of control. He wasted actors' dates, affecting all the other movies that they're making. He had committed to Cryarch to deliver the film in June. There's no way that's going to happen. And final straw, he announced that he wanted to release in December, conflicting with Shah Rukh Khan's Zero, which is a bad idea all around, and he's not willing to move off of that. And so Cryarge, the production house, did the unthinkable. They are taking his movie away from him. This almost never happens. You do hear stories of directors who are suddenly shuffled around. For instance, Anil Gupta and uh, Tara Zaminpa, Amir Khan replacing him and so on. But in that case, Amir Khan had been developing the story with him all along. They were already close, close partners doing everything together. And he just removed one of those partners and took over for himself. This is not that situation. Abhishek Kapoor has been doing everything on his own. He's not been working with anyone else. It's a complete outside group who technically legally has control of the film, but has no artistic interest or involvement in it that is suddenly coming in, taking the movie away from him. And they're doing it through contracts, not through, you know, scary men with guns showing up at your door, but through legal contracts. Now, all of this, I think, is actually a good thing. Maybe I wouldn't have thought that if Fatour hadn't happened, but it did happen. And it almost sunk the industry in a whole bunch of different ways. The idea of just throwing money at a director and trusting him to do a good job is not a good idea. You need a system of checks and balances. In the olden days, it was the director's own conscience and good sense and sense of self-preservation, literally self-preservation. He was not going to go over budget or over schedule or any of those things because he had to pay money back like now. <laughs> But as the industry has shifted, there's still this reliance on the director having the good sense on his head to be responsible in terms of how he handles a film. And a lack of awareness that the director has fewer and fewer consequences if he is not responsible. Fatur flopped. Disney essentially left India. UTV was in trouble. The head of UTV got fired. Aditya Roy Kapoor's career tanked. All sorts of terrible things happened. Abhishek Kapoor, the director, he was kind of fine. <laughs> he got his money. He lost the chance to direct Rock On 2, but he was able to put together a package and use his connections and set up for this next movie. So you can see why he didn't really care as much that the movie went over budget and ultimately didn't make money.
This is how you learn to care. When you have somebody coming in saying, well, if you don't pray, play nicely, I'm going to take it away from you. Here's my dog who's going insane. <laughs> I don't know why she does this every time of night. But this is what I'm talking about. I need to figure out something that she cares about and take it away from her because she should not be behaving like this. <laughs> This is not okay. You have to have a system of checks and balances and power in place. And that is my hope for what this is indicating, that actually going to court and taking the movie away is going to be a sign, not just to Abhishek Kapoor, but to all the other directors out there, that they're not invincible, that they do have to answer to people, and they do have to keep the greater good and the greater business sense in mind. Anyway, that's how it looks to me. You can agree, you can disagree, you can tell me how cute my dog is. Just leave me a comment. There's a link to my blog post right below. Thanks. Bye.